last show I watched for review, I figured I needed to wash my brain out a little bit, so I decided to go with the production IG show on the opposite end of the science fiction spectrum, Psychopaths. Uh, that, that's all I got for an intro. Let's, let's talk about it. Psychopaths is a science fiction police drama most notable for being written by Gen Urobuchi and his team at Nitro Plus. And say what you will about Urobuchi, but you can't deny that he's got one thing in spades. Marketability. As soon as his name is attached to something, it immediately becomes one of the most hotly anticipated news shows. And of course, that isn't always a good thing, as per the case of Old Noah's Year, where Urobuchi had hardly any involvement beyond initial planning and development. Luckily for Psychopaths, Urobuchi and his buddies at Nitro Plus wrote nearly the whole damn thing themselves. We're in for a swell time, aren't we? Psychopaths' plot, despite what people will tell you about it being so deep and philosophical, is actually it's pretty straightforward. A newbie police girl joins a force, finds out the job is a little more difficult than anticipated, and covers a nearly uncatchable criminal, and so on and so forth, and you know, it's pretty standard stuff. I think what tends to trip people up is the constant name dropping and referencing of classic literature, which can admittedly feel a little heavy handed and cheesy at times. Also, you've got Urobuchi's involvement, and I feel like because he wrote the show, people started reading way too much into it. Uh, which is fine, I'm not disparaging people who are smarter than me that can actually read into stuff, you know, I just. I just feel like it wasn't nearly as complicated as people wanted it to be. Psychopaths is really only a 15 or so episode story and clocking in at 22 minutes there's bound to be a little downtime. Now the biggest example of this is the entirety of episode 12. This is the filler episode and unless you feel like getting some background on a character that could have been removed from the show entirely and nothing would have changed, uh, you can skip this episode. Also the main plot of the show doesn't really get moving until around episodes 5 or 6. And you know, it's never boring, but it definitely takes a minute for the show to get properly into gear. And granted, there are some scenes of dialogue that run just a bit too long, and you'll start to wonder, man, are these pretty boys ever gonna stop talking about philosophy and classic literature and actually get into shooting people with the magic science guns? Come on, that's what I signed up for. But for the most part, Psychopath succeeds in holding your attention. And like I said before, some of those themes certainly feel a little heavy-handed and pseudo-philosophical, and it might make you wonder where exactly things are headed in the plot department, but it's never overbearing enough to ruin the experience. I mean, this is show that has guns that turn people into human gushers, so <laughs> I mean, it's already pretty edgy. And chances are your entry-level anime friend already thinks this is the deepest shit ever, but, like, you know, don't ruin their fun. More spooky boogie. If I had to pick Psychopath's strongest point, it would certainly be the cast. When I hear people talk about Urobuchi, they like to refer to him as the, you know, sort of like the Shyamalan of anime, with the le epic twists and OMG brutality towards his characters, and, you know, that certainly does play into a part of the narrative here, but I feel like his strongest point as a writer is the ability to write really good characters. There's a reason people get so torn up when a character bites it in an Urobuchi pen show, and it's because you've become attached to them through good writing. And not to say you'll necessarily like all the characters. The main character Akane starts the show as someone who really holds the rest of the team back, but as the show progresses, you'll, you'll come to like her as she grows into a role. Kogami is also an excellent lead. Now, there's not much to say about him as his progression is pretty straightforward. One character who surprised me was Ginaza, who begins the show as a rod in the ass stickler, but as he comes to question the system he works for and struggles with his feelings so as not to end up like his father, you'll come to find him as one of the best characters. Also, Ginaza's relationship with his father, who is also a favorite character of mine, really pays off in the end of the series. As far as the antagonist goes, Makishima is a villain that can really only work in a series like this. Any other series and it would have felt completely overwrought and way too edgy. That being said, some of his motivations might leave you scratching your head, but overall he's a solid addition to the cast. One of the most interesting facets of his character comes later on in the series after a big reveal and how he reacts to the new information he's been offered. Again, I won't tell you too much because spoilers, but it's neat stuff. If I had to pick Psychopaths' weakest point, it would definitely be the visual presentation. N not the visuals themselves, because aside from the, uh, quality of episode 18. Thanks, Korea. The animation is pretty solid throughout. Granted, some of the CGI is a little jarring, but the actual animation is pretty standard IG quality. My problem is actually with the directing of the show. Now, it's it's not bad, don't get me wrong, but I feel like with some more daring direction, the show could have been elevated from good to great. The issue here is that it all feels so textbook. The show uses sound effects instead of framing and blocking to build tension and excitement. It's a little disappointing, to be honest, but what do I know? I'm just some schmuck who never went to film school. Let's talk about the character designs for a second. You have this entire cast of slick-looking, hot, grizzled, and otherwise attractive characters that encompasses, you know, 99% of them. And then you have Akane, who looks like a 12-year-old that's either stoned or stupid. Or both. Special mention to the OST here, composed by Yugo Kano. It's different from most anime soundtracks in that it actually has a main theme that will return in different forms and different tracks. And it's, it's really just a good soundtrack, too. Had it not been for Urobuchi's name on this, I feel like Psychopaths might have flown under the radar, but luckily it's fairly popular. Really solid sci-fi anime like this that doesn't rely too much on tired tropes without also breathing new life into them is pretty difficult to come by. So do I recommend you watch Psychopaths? Yeah, man, go for it.